extreme heat over Canada and the USA. People are having to go to libraries, malls, places that are public in order to find a couple hours of air conditioning. Detecting the climate change fingerprint on this severe heat wave. This can become actually a very common event. It may happen every one or two years. And what do hotter summers mean for the future of tennis? That showed peak temperatures during the first week of Wimbledon reaching 32 Celsius before rising to 37 on the Friday. It's Friday, the 2nd of July, and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir, and this is Weathersnap, the insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. It's fair to say temperature records in the northwest US and Canada haven't been broken in recent days. They've been positively smashed. As crippling heat continues to affect millions across the region, our climate correspondent, Graham Madge, spoke to Armel Castellan, a meteorologist based in British Columbia who described local conditions. Each morning you wake up to a slightly warmer temperature and then it compounds into the day reaching a higher high and so on. And that's what's dangerous about this is it's affecting people throughout many days where they're dehydrated, uh, they're dealing with either chronic illness or they're elderly or even young people all are super vulnerable to the heat related illnesses of this kind of a pattern. How do you even begin to cope with the heat? Overnight lows being higher than our average daytime highs for late June is a really big deal. Epidemiology tells us that uh, our bodies need to cool off, recover before taking on such an extreme second, third, fourth day of really strong temperatures. And the other thing to think about is the infrastructure in a place like southern BC, even the interior, there's a lot of air conditioning, but on the coast, it's less than 40% of homes. So people are having to go uh, to uh, libraries, malls, places uh, that are public during a pandemic that's not totally over here in BC, uh, which is tricky, in order to find a couple hours of air conditioning, because otherwise they don't necessarily have it at home. I, for one, slept in a tent in my backyard because my home doesn't have air conditioning, and it was the easiest way to get slightly cooler temperatures, even in those kind of conditions. When did it become apparent that these oppressive conditions might start to break records? They really started up in earnest on Friday last week, and they're peaking, uh, you know, early this week for the coast and into the middle of the week for uh, the interior of BC. And then it's really shifting into Alberta. So we're not done with it yet. Even our territories, Yukon and Northwest Territories, have recorded their all-time highest temperatures, not just in June, but July, August, September, any point in the year. So we're setting records that have no business being set so early in the season. Unfortunately, the outlook is very dry. Yes, we have some thunderstorm activity, which will bring some respite, but it's also very dangerous to then add to a very strong drought signal, dry lightning, which will obviously cause wildfires. And we're right now very susceptible to that kind of an event uh, transpiring. Meteorologist Armel Castellan. The severity of the current North American heatwave is also evident from space. Recent satellite imagery reveals angry pyrocumulus clouds formed above wildfires in British Columbia. These have added to the furnace-like conditions, with many areas in a state of emergency, with evacuation orders in place. So, is this latest heatwave down to climate change, or explained as an event within the natural variation of our climate? Dr Nikos Christides is a climate scientist here at the Met Office, His work involves something called attribution studies, and he's been examining recent events. The question that we try to answer is what is the chance of hitting a new record in the region? What is the likelihood of having an extremely hot June in Western United States? And what we found is that without the effect of human influence, it would have been almost impossible to have this kind of extreme temperature. So... In the pre-industrial climate, this kind of events would happen once every 60,000 years. But in the present day climate affected by human influence, we estimate that we can get this kind of extreme June temperatures every 15 years. And going forward, if we look at the end of the century, 
this can become actually a very common event. It may happen every one or two years. Dr. Nikos Christides. Every year, Met Office meteorologists forecast the weather for the two-week tennis tournament at Wimbledon. Generally, the greatest public interest will be around rain and how fine conditions are likely to be. But what about heat? Given recent headlines, what about extreme heat due to future climate change? What might a Wimbledon week in, say, 2059 look like? To find out, meteorologist Aidan McGiven put together a hypothetical forecast. Aidan, first of all, tell me how this forecast came about. Whilst it would be impossible to forecast the precise weather conditions for the 5th of July in 2059, what we can do is to simulate how a heat wave in the UK might look under a high emissions scenario in almost 40 years' time. What is a high emissions scenario? Well, one of the biggest sources of uncertainty in climate change is how much the world manages to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the years to come. And that's why climate scientists model future global warming under various scenarios. A high emissions scenario is essentially business as usual through to the middle of the century and beyond. Now, this forecast was based on a high emissions scenario. The levels of greenhouse gas concentrations by the 2050s in this scenario are fed into the computer model. That model then simulates weather patterns every day for a decade or so, and these simulations are run several times. And what the climate scientists found was that the UK continues to experience highly changeable weather from day to day and from place to place. But when heat waves occur, they last longer and the maximum temperatures in the UK are higher compared to the present day. So what did the data for Wimbledon actually show? The data showed a heat wave that occurred at the beginning of July in 2059. Again, we're not saying that in July 2059 there will definitely be a heat wave, but what we can say is that in the 2050s, under this high emission scenario, these are the kinds of temperatures we can expect. So from the various model runs, we didn't pick the most extreme examples. We were careful to pick a run that sits somewhere in the middle. And that showed peak temperatures during the first week of Wimbledon reaching 32 Celsius before rising to 37 on the Friday and an overall maximum of 40 Celsius by Saturday. So what would those temperatures mean for tennis? This might qualify, for example, as a high heat stress condition with longer breaks between games and sets. And if the humidity was higher, it could even qualify as an extreme heat stress day, in which case play would have to be suspended entirely. Now, of course, there would also be impacts on spectators who would need breaks from the heat and other precautions to stay safe. For anyone travelling to the event, temperatures this high could impact transport and power disruption. And of course, whilst it's interesting to see how future heat waves could affect tournaments such as Wimbledon, it's important not to forget that global warming will bring many other risks across the UK and even more severe risks elsewhere in the world. Aidan McKibben, thank you very much. And if you'd like to watch Aidan's forecast for Wimbledon 2059, visit our website, metoffice.gov.uk. Well, despite high temperatures in North America, this week Wimbledon has seen its wettest start in 10 years. So how will the weekend fare in South London and the rest of the UK? Here's Alex Deacon. I feel the roof will be needed this weekend and on the outer courts, well, the covers are likely to be on and off on Saturday. Yes, we're looking at heavy showers, but not just at SW19, at all postcodes across the UK. It is looking very showery this weekend. Heavy showers, thundery showers, and slow moving showers as well. So some places getting a real downpour, but as is often the case in the summer months, it's not going to rain all day everywhere. Far from it. There will be dry and bright spells. Northern Scotland probably uh, seeing some of the driest weather on Saturday. Not much rain expected here until later on. But elsewhere, anticipate showers, but also there will be, as I say, bright spells in between the downpours. It won't rain all day. Difficult to give details at this stage. So the best advice is to keep up to date with the radar on the day if you've got outdoor plans on Saturday. Sunday's looking similar again. Low pressure in charge near to the UK and moving around that there will be slow moving, heavy 
thundery showers. And again, they could cause some problems with some places getting a real deluge, whereas five miles away, it may be completely dry. So it's a case of dodging the downpours this weekend. As I said, difficult to give detail, but keep up to date with the radar. If you download the Met Office app, then you can watch the radar on there. So it's showery this weekend, heavy showers continuing into Monday, it looks like as well. The weather pattern's looking pretty disturbed thanks to a south shifted jet well into next week. There are some signs that high pressure may return come the back end of next week, but plenty of downpours to get through before that. Thanks, Alex. Now here with last week's highs and lows, Martin Bowles. Here are the UK weather extremes for last week recorded between Monday the 21st and Sunday the 27th of June. The highest official temperature of the week was 25.7 Celsius on Thursday at Chillingham Barns in Northumberland. The lowest temperature was minus 2.4 Celsius at Altnahara in Sutherland. This sub-zero temperature was recorded on Friday the 22nd, only a few hours after the summer solstice. The longest sunshine hours were also on Friday, when 15.5 hours were measured at Morecambe in Lancashire. The largest rainfall in one day was 35.4 millimetres, measured at St Mary's Airport on the Isles of Scilly. Thanks, Martin. That's it for Weather Snap. I'm Claire Nazir, and editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.